bones within this area that you might consider if you look into the nasal cavity from a posterior view and concentrate on the nasal septum, the bony nasal septum. Then from this view, most of the nasal septum is formed by the vomer. And so this is the best view of the vomer. Then also when you're looking here at an inferior view, then if you're looking at the floor of the mouth, get this silly little spring out of the way here, if you're looking at the floor of the mouth, the floor of the mouth, no, the roof of the mouth, mm -hmm. then this structure is palate, and if you run your tongue along the roof of your mouth, you notice that it is hard, and so specifically that is the soft palate, but as you get your tongue more posteriorly, it becomes soft because there's no underlying bone. Perhaps you see this line right across. Uh, that's a suture line, but it's been highlighted here by someone drawing it in with a pencil. Anterior to this suture line is all maxillary bone. However, posterior to this suture line, all that's there through here is a bone called the palatine. It's a bone called the palatine bone. Now, this comprises most of the features of the, uh, of the skull. However, in some of these bones, particularly the bones that surround the nasal cavity, there are air cavities on the inside of the bone called sinuses. And these sinuses that are around the nasal cavity are the paranasal sinuses. And in life, they're lined with the same type of mucous membrane that the inside the nasal cavity is, is made up of. And they all connect into that nasal cavity. And so therefore, the mucus that is secreted is drained from the sinuses down into the inside the nasal uh, cavity. But the congestion that is created from the swelling of those tissues creates a problem for many of us when we end up having the sinus congestion. But in order to see the sinuses, you have to view a specimen in which the bones have been cut. That's not going to work on any of these plastic skulls, because if you did cut them, there's not going to be any sinuses on the inside. So the specimen to study for using the sinuses, for seeing the sinuses, is the skull that has been cut in a mid-sagittal section that you'll find in the wooden box with all the specimens. So you have a diagram within your textbook that is also mid-sagittal view of the skull also. And it's an excellent one to use to see the sinuses. So to guide you through those sinuses, again, since this is frontal bone, then if we cut that frontal bone, then you'll, you'll see that the inside of the frontal bone is hollow. Well, this is the frontal sinus. Now, that sinus is a lot bigger than what it looks like here because you're just seeing an opening into it. You can see how far that I can put the probe into there. So this sinus actually extends all the way across the top of the orbits. Then if we go inferiorly, then what you're looking at here is the lateral wall of the nasal cavity. The nasal septum has been removed in this specimen. And you see this very large opening in the lateral wall that leads into a very large cavernous area. This is the sphenoid sinus, the largest of the sinuses. And here is the, not the sphenoid sinus, I'm sorry, the maxillary sinus. And since this is the maxillary bone, then you can see that the entire inside of this maxillary bone is hollow, creating a rather large sinus that is nearly the diameter of a 50 cent piece. Then the ethmoid bone, which is all in this area here, is nearly a labyrinth of sinuses with bony separations that are extremely fragile, paper thin. Um, so therefore, such openings like here and here, here and here and here and here, these are all the sinuses on the inside of the ethmoid bone, which is like, as you can see nearly, it's almost like a catacomb of, of air passageways on the inside of that bone which makes reconstructive surgery of that bone if it gets broken, which it does quite often in a facial injury, um, a rather nightmare uh, for, the, for the surgeon. This bone here is all sphenoid. And again, if you look at the floor of the cranial cavity, perhaps you can again recognize the cella tersica. The cella tersica has been cut in half, and you notice that just inferior to the cella tersica is a cavity on the inside of the sphenoid bone. So this is the sphenoid sinus. So all total, you have a sphenoid sinus, and you have the ethmoidal sinuses, you have the maxillary sinus, and you have the frontal sinuses. So I think this kind of completes our survey through the skull. Hope that this has helped you with your study.